Mm. That's interesting. One of the, I mean, the one of the questions will be how accurate, and this is of course for tomorrow and the day after yeah. the day after. How well have the polls done in, you know, picking everything that's happening? Um, well, I mean, overall, just at a first mm. glance, I, I think they haven't been too bad. They've overstated national. No, they're off they're one or two. Um, New Zealand. Yeah. Well, that but, was the question. Except, that's what I was about yeah. to say, except for New Zealand first. But my feeling is that that has been a late surge. That has been the undecideds mm. making up their mind in the last two days. Yeah. And we have seen the polls coming out yeah. with them going up, 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 3%, 4%. And mm. there was one that had them on 6.5% that came out Sure, um, but everyone yesterday. thought that was crazy. They were, everyone <laughs> thought that was crazy? It seems not. Sure. And it shows you the impact of polls in themselves mm-hmm. that they can have this sort of bandwagon effect yeah. where people do because you know, the media they do put a lot in these polls and people read them and think oh um, New Zealand first on the one hand they're the underdogs on another hand they're surging up maybe they're someone to vote for yeah and I when it comes to polls I tend to I do agree with Hone Harawira's assessment that they when they're conducted by landline telephone these days there are problems yeah. there are real problems I think most people from my generation, mm. probably most, only have a mobile phone, and yeah, yeah. and a lot of, I would imagine a lot of, yeah, just a lot, large sort of groups, yeah. specific groups, of poor people, young people, really just old people and baby boomers. I have a landline actually, I'm a baby boomer, no I'm not really, but you know. Who I have a landline but don't have a cell phone. But that's because well, I'm useless. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm not on Facebook, so I'm oh, a yeah, bit yeah. of a technophobe as well. Yeah. So we had your, I suppose, putative boss, boss somewhere in there, uh, um, Simon Cunliffe, sitting there uh, earlier, and he was giving his local take, and one of the questions I put to him was, what's the front page on Monday? If you were him, yeah. if you were your own boss, what would, you, what would your front page be for Monday? <laughs> More photos of the Elton John concert. Oh, Lord, I just yes. don't want to know about this election result. It's yeah. really terrible. Yeah. I, I, look, here's some plastic cutlery for you because the, oh, the, the silverware is going to be sold now because so, we've got a national government, so I'm, I'm out of here. Oh, with that okay. Well, that's very kind. Thanks for coming in, Anna. Terrible outcome. Well, thank you, Hannah. We do appreciate your time. Okay, well, we were talking earlier in the night to Michael Woodhouse. He was our first guest, in he fact. Was. Um, so we're hoping to get him back on the line um, to see what he has to say about um, sure. Dunedin North well, and and the, yep. the, vo- the vote overall. And well, before we do get him, let's flick up the the results so we can see what um, how he's actually uh, you know how he did do the the final results. Okay, for and Dunedin North. Yep. Um, we can imagine he didn't win, but. Uh, Certainly. Okay, we've got 100% counted now, so we pretty much can declare that David Clark is the new MP David Clark for with 11, North. So a majority of 3,300 as compared to... How did that compare? To... But what's been interesting is that the well, party actually, this vote... this is very interesting, because Michael actually, too, has lost about 1,700 votes personally from the last election. Which probably which... isn't entirely surprising for a new candidate, perhaps. No, that's... Oh, sorry? No, Michael Woodhouse. Oh, Michael Woodhouse. Michael Woodhouse. Okay, sorry, yes. Last election got 9,900 electorate votes and got... uh, Pete Hodgson got 17,000. So low voter turnout, it seems. People have stayed away. That is a very low... But, of course, what we don't have in Dunedin North, and, of course, we're idiots for not recognising this, is um, the large number of absentee votes that there will be. Sure, but... um Special votes. Yeah, but maybe. Anyway, okay, so that's a bit, that could be Michael coming through okay. now. Yep. Hello, we're talking to Michael, are we? Hello, Bryce. Hello, it's actually Andrew. It's, uh, oh, good day, Andrew. How are you? Uh, very well, thank you. We're talking to Michael Woodhouse, the uh, National Party uh, uh, candidate for Dunedin North. So the results are in in Dunedin North. Commiserations. Commiserations, first. Yeah, well, no, quite. look, um, I'm actually far from it. I'm actually very pleased. I phoned David Clark, <laughs> Dr Clark, a couple of minutes ago to congratulate him on a campaign uh, well fought. But look, we are absolutely delighted. We've improved the party vote in Dunedin North quite considerably. I don't know what the margins are looking like, but it was 5,000 three years ago, and we've certainly eroded that. Absolutely. But I think the story in Dunedin is the party vote in the south, where Joe Hayes yes. has... Oh dominated the party vote yes. and won it by what could be nearly 2,000. Yes, yeah. we, have, um, we, have been, we have been noting that. Yes, the, the final was 11,429 for Labour, 13,190 for National, which we, we're right, that's, yeah, amazed. 1,700. Yeah. Yes, quite. So how do you explain that? I talked that, earlier Michael? about the possibility that you know, we could be approaching a tipping point where Dunedin is no longer a traditionally or automatically red mm. city, mm. and I think we've made uh, quite 
quite big strides towards that tonight. So Labor, Labor will be quite shocked about that, I think. Um, how, how do you explain what's happened? It's going to take a while to analyse, I think, um, but it does appear as though, well, two things have happened. I think both candidates for Labor have worked much harder on the electorate vote, yes. um, and particularly the new candidate in Dunedin North, which is only natural. But the number of Labor supporters that appear to have gone away with their party votes to the Greens or New Zealand First mm. is quite surprising. Mm and we'll, we'll uh, probably exercise the minds of the Labour uh, senior team for a wee while. Yes, yes. The other thing we're just noticing with Tanid North is that they, they, uh, the actual votes counted are still quite low compared to last year. Do, is that a reduced turnout or are you still expecting a lot of specials to come in? Well, there'll be a lot of, adv um, a lot of special votes, yep. yes. Um, they were, I think from memory last year there were about 3,500. Right. So that'll bump it up. But even if it's that or even a bit more, it's probably about 12% down, yeah. 12 to 15% down on three years ago. So mm. that is interesting. It may reflect the late election date relative to the ending of the university year. Sure. Yeah. Yep. But, uh, I mean, what, what do you guys think? I mean, it's, it's quite a big um, non-show. Yeah, it's a very big drop. Um, Unless there are a huge number of uh, specials sitting out there to come in, I mean, we're talking about seven thousand less than last last year, yeah, um, exactly. which would be a lot of specials to, to 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 come through. It may well be, as you say, that there's a lot of people who are enrolled in Dunedin North who've left town and just haven't voted. Mm. Yep, indeed. Yeah. But I think the big story, and I'm sure you've been talking about it, is the phoenix-like return <laughs> of yes. New Zealand First. And uh, Bryce and I will probably have to hang up our soothsayers' badges because um, I don't think anybody actually would have predicted the strength of the um, of the numbers for New Zealand First on the night. No. Um, so so how, do you, how do you explain that? Oh, uh, I can't. <laughs> uh, although, uh, well, you you guys are the commentators, yeah. and I think that uh, you may well be speculating about the influence of the um, the the T yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, tape yeah. saga. It seemed to breathe life into mm. the New Zealand First campaign. And it didn't really give much of a return for Act, so I think that's going to be something to be reflected on in, yes. in the next few days and weeks. The other thing we have noticed is, I mean, Act's votes stuck at one, but the Conservatives have come through with over two and a half percent, which yeah, that's interesting. again was something that I don't think was really spotted by any commentators I saw. Is that a should you have been having a cup of tea in Rodney rather than Epsom? <laughs> well. <laughs> Hindsight's a wonderful yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. Um, but They're I think that was a very slick campaign launch by a party that uh, had really come from nowhere, and yeah. to pick up 2.4% of the votes is quite an achievement sure. when compared with parties like Agden and United Future. Mm. So I think we haven't heard the last of Colin Craig and the mm. Conservative Party, mm. and um, yeah, it's a case of standby for 2014 on that front. Sure, great. Well, look, uh, you haven't taken to Need North yet, you're, you're getting closer. Um, but National's had a great day in uh, Dunedin and it's had a great day across the country mm. and there's no doubt we'll see a national-led government waking up tomorrow. The exact shape of it we're still waiting to see. So uh, you, uh, congratulations to you and thanks for bringing us back. Thanks very much, guys. No, thanks, we're Michael. very happy with how we've gone in Dunedin. Well Appreciate done. It. Thank you, Michael. Bye now. Well, um, as you say, I think you've summed it up. Mm. It's uh, national government tomorrow. Mm. Um, not quite sure of the shape. Mm. So it looks like they've got about 60 seats, um, which they will supplement with yeah. one from Epsom, I mean, one well, from Ohio. The National's problem is that if they, on the seats at the moment, they've got a majority with United Future and Act. That yeah. gives them 62 and 121 seats. Yeah. But if they lose one more seat on specials mm. and come down to 59, yeah. then that gives them 59 plus 1 plus 161. Mm. Is just just over yeah and they're, they're just one seat away right from uh from which which uh, often is said to be not a good governing no. um situation because sure. things can change throughout three years Absolutely. so they're um, going to want they're going to want the maori party in there yeah um so tomorrow i think the phones or perhaps even tonight the phones are going to be going mm. between the maori party and national uh to talk about you know what do we need to do to get together okay and do you think there'll be a phone call to anyone else the Green Party will they get a their phone call the Green Party will come down the line the Green Party will come down yeah. the line what yeah. is it we can do to work together what is it that we can do to um, to you know basically move towards the future because that I think is something that they're going to have to look at for the future but we're going to be joined uh, once again on the set by our two political studies student commentators 
Uh, once again, James and Ashley, thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, so give us your summary because we're, we're concluding things. So Moving what's... towards the finish. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've just looked at a couple of the polls, and it's, I mean, it's remarkably close to what the late, the very last polls yeah. actually said. We've got the ones from the New Zealand Digi poll, which was held on, was it Friday? 25th. Well, 25th. came out on Friday. Yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. they have every party pretty much within one or two, one, one and a yeah. half um, points. Yeah. So, so that's a kind of not that surprising, yeah, and yeah. I suppose there is some truth to the, that the polls stuff, are, yeah. are pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And I predict as well. I don't know if you guys trade yeah. on I predict, but I think it was remarkably accurate as well. Well, there'll be yeah. a few people who made a lot of money on uh, Winston Peters yeah. on I predict, yeah. I think, yeah. over yeah. the past few hours. Yeah. Yeah. There hasn't really been anything unsurprising throughout the election, perhaps with the exception of New Zealand First. Um, yeah. And the, the percentage of the party vote that they received and the number of seats that they're going to have in Parliament. So that's probably a little bit higher mm. than most people had mm. anticipated. The Greens dropped down a bit, and that was... As to, to be expected, generally they usually mm. poll higher and then decrease on um, election day. But overall, the sort of the divide between national and labour, it was quite clear from the polls mm. that were sure. coming out that that gap wasn't really going to no. close substantially. No. And I mean, one of the interesting things is that if the Conservatives weren't around, I mean, where would that have vote have mm. gone? Yes, if right. it had gone all to national, that bumps them up to 50 yeah. and I mean, yeah. all, well over 50 per cent. Mm. So I mean. It's kind of, it's, it's interesting that the polls were so accurate, I guess. Mm, absolutely. Mm. Very good. And so then the two big stories are National will lead the next government, yet to be seen exactly what form it'll take, but fairly clear. Mm. New Zealand first, they're back. Winston's back. He's bringing, what, eight of his, seven people with yeah, him? Yeah, seven. So yeah, there'll be got... eight of them in there. Um, sitting defiantly on the cross benches, refusing to talk to anyone else. <laughs> well, well, we'll see about that. Yeah. Uh -huh. I yeah. mean, I, d I think National will not definitely don't want to touch him. No, no. Uh, they um, don't need to either. No. Yeah. <laughs> but whether or not he tries to make a bit of noise about it, who knows? Mm -hmm. Sure. And the disappointments then, the people who've really... You know, the, the, we talk about the, the happy people. Yep. The people who are sad at the end of tonight are... Labour. Yeah. Um, Carmel Cipollone um, yeah. lost uh, to... And she'll be out of Parliament. Yep, she'll so be out of Parliament. Yeah. Um, so I'd imagine, I mean, there'll be a few people in Labour who aren't feeling too happy after the results tonight, people who are not even so much lower on the list, but sort of in the mid-range of the list, and a mm -hmm. lot of those candidates have been mm -hmm. lost. Um, yeah. We did hear that talking with Jacinda Ardern there, yeah. you know, where she was saying it was going to be a hard caucus meeting, you know, yeah. a lot of empty chairs, and that's always hard. Mm. Yeah. Clayton Cosgrove will be quite happy, I think, that he put mm. himself on the list for this election. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm not I'm not sure of the final result there, but I think he, at last look, mm. he was behind. Right. Yeah. Um, I think a couple of, I mean, interestingly, a couple of the national MPs up in the North Island have had their margins cut a little bit. Mm. I think Anne Tolley lost a couple of thousand there. I think mm. Chris Tremaine lost um, three or four thousand, mm. but that's probably because Stuart Nash mm. was up against yes, yes. him and he's a lot, he's, he's a bigger name mm. in Napier. Mm. Mm. And Damien O'Connor took out West yes. Coast. Yep. So he's a big winner as well because he that's wasn't right. on the list. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But we're talking about carrying on with our sad thing. Yep. So Sadness. Yeah. Sadness. Labour across the board, it's not been a great night for them. They've polled around Mari expectations, party. but their the yeah. expectations came down a lot. Yeah. Maori party, you think? Uh, yes, Māori Party, party yeah. I think Rahui Kartney will be yeah. extremely disappointed. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think she thought yeah. she had done a really, really good job in the campaign, and I suspect she really thought she was going to uh, take it out, but yeah. it's not looking like that way. Uh, she, she was unclear in our talk with her as to exactly why she thought yeah. she'd lost out. What do you guys reckon? Well, it's, a little, it's, it's difficult because I know that some of the um, Marae Digi polls that were released had it very much neck and neck, and yes. I think Rahu was actually in the lead mm. yeah. throughout some of those yeah. polls. So I think it's almost quite surprising. I mean, I don't follow the, the Te Taitonga electorate mm. closely, so I'm not entirely sure of some of the factors yeah. at play. Well, but I, I think if we look at the polling booths, if you end up getting that data later mm. on, mm. whoever won, wins Wellington tends to win the seat, so I think sure. if she mm -hmm. yeah. hadn't made a, as much of an impact up there as she would have liked, mm. um, then perhaps that was where she lost okay. it. I also think the Mana Party have lost out yeah. tonight substantially. Yeah. I don't they think, would have been hoping for two. I yeah. think they're all, now they're all Hone he did. Yeah. It's a one-man band yeah. quite clearly Absolutely. now, and that's what they had to fight against yep. to be an ongoing force. 
And he's, so, done, he's done extremely well on Tito Tokoro, but yep. I mean, no, mm. the other candidates just haven't made an impact no. anywhere else across the board. They haven't split any vote, they haven't um, no. taken any candidate votes. Mm. I think they'll be really, really disappointed. Mm. Mm. Um, and I think now um, it's going to be hard for Honi to, uh, the Mana Party to be anything other than Honi mm. Arawin. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's right. United Future, Peter Dunn's last hurrah. This is his last term, you think? Um, I, I think, <laughs> yes. Likely, yeah. Yes, and I think probably not on his terms either. Yeah. No? Well, I mean, this this was a pretty close race overall for him. There's sure. not that party support there um, mm. for United Future that there once was. You know, That's the day right. of the worm mm. has been yeah. and gone well and truly. Yep. Um, and I think when you see other parties like the Conservatives starting mm. to emerge and sort of eat up a lot That's of that, right. that party vote, yep. um, he's obviously starting to lose a lot of that core support base there. So I, I don't think... But given, given United be... Future's past, can't United Future Conservative merge? United Future <laughs> exactly. Conservative... <laughs> tendency, United Future has yeah. a tendency to so, merge and then break away right. again <laughs> from political parties, so they might merge, but whether or not there's any, yeah. um, well, whether I it's going to last. Yeah, it wouldn't, uh, to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me if, if halfway through the term Peter Dunn decided that, well, maybe he'll be a Conservative Party candidate next time, and then <laughs> they do a kind of an Epsom, where they rely on him with his uh, uh, electorate vote, and yeah. then Colin Craig pumps another couple of million into their campaign, and they see how far they get. Right. Interesting mm. thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Next election, that idea began here. Yeah. <laughs> Tiger <laughs> University election night special. <laughs> exactly. Chat. James Meager. Very good. Great. So, concluding thoughts. The whole um, election. I mean, we've cool. we've tried to make it as exciting as analytical and so on as possible, but in the end, are we just back really what we thought we were going to see at the start? Yeah. yeah. It's been predictable. I think Labor's run a stronger campaign than perhaps most had anticipated they come out more organised right from yep. the get-go at the start of the year. They framed the debate by setting asset sales as the issue. Mm. It's not necessarily the issue that got people to the polls mm. in voting Labor, but it certainly framed the election debate and what we were focusing on. So mm. I think they've actually done a really good job in doing that and running a relatively cohesive campaign mm. in spite of everything. Um, it's just no one voted for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll and be that's all that counts at the end of the day, yes. is it? Yeah. I think the most interesting post-election issues will be uh, what the Green Party gets out of National for mm -hmm. any sort yeah. of memorandum of understanding. Agreed. Uh, yeah. How much of a ruckus Winston Peters can cause yeah. in his first few months back. Mm. Uh, and obviously the Labour Party leadership. And I don't yeah. think you'll yeah. hear... Yeah. Squeak from National until they announce their cabinet, whenever that will be. I think the, the coalition, the supply agreements will be predictable. Mm. Mm. Um, I think Māori Party will get probably their ministers back. Mm. I don't think ACT will get, well, ACT obviously will not get any ministers. John Banks won't have a show of getting a minister, mm. and I wouldn't be surprised if they cut think, them adrift. You don't think they there. don't mm. put John Banks in? I mean, basically. I don't think he'll get a ministerial position, no. Mm. It's just basically welcoming someone back into the fold, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah well. An associate, a ministerial post outside cabinet, perhaps? Anyway, well, they, they, don't really need, they, they don't really need. They don't the, need Banks. That's a good point. They, right? they, need, they need the ACT Party to pass centre right policy with yeah. the support of sure. United Future, mm. but the way that they're tracking ACT's going to support them on most of their policies mm. anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think they need to sweeten. Yeah. Um, the John Banks deal anymore, no, and then no. I think next time you'll see probably a lot more Paul Goldsmith signs up around the electorate. Mm. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Whether, whether, so. the, whether there's an act party for them to, I mean, we talked about, mm. you know, United Future, whether this being their last hurrah, can act survive with John Banks as their flag bearer for the next term? Well, there will be, there will be a big gap in the libertarian, yeah, um, socially liberal, but right. economically, yeah. I guess, right wing party. There right. won't be a party there. That's no. right. So you might, I mean. There's potential for national, I guess, to move to, to socially liberal. Yeah, that's right. area. Mm. 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 Interesting. Wow. Well, we're coming up to the end of our <laughs> our time, and our issues seem that we're, we've talked quite through. What that summed what it up. Our quite, I think yeah. that sums it up really nicely, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a uh, more of the same, really. Um, and that's what this campaign has really been about, I think. It's been a very conservative campaign mm. from National where they haven't promised anything particularly. They haven't sort of stated they're going to do anything particularly differently mm. apart from maybe the asset sales. Well, and no, no, no. Asset sales is too strong. Part private ownership. Partial privatisation. Yes. Um, <laughs> exactly. And it's worked for them. Sure. Apart from the, the tea pot tapes, mm. which has given life to New Zealand mm. First, um, that's really been the mm. only surprise of the campaign sure. and the results, really, yeah. I think. Because to show that, you know, you can script these things, you can, you know, have your... That's right. Uh, you know, everything can be laid out, you can have the perfect battle plan, and then something as silly as a little microphone can go and change 
to some degree. It hasn't changed the actual whole election outcome, mm. hasn't gone that no. far, but it's just interesting to see how even in you know, the most tightly scripted political theatre, right. the human aspect can just come in and just kind of throw it all yeah. out. Mm. And that, I think, will be one of the things that is remembered from the campaign, mm. is the teapot sure. tapes, um, and it's New Zealand First's eventual success. Those sure. are the two big themes that will come out tonight. Yep. I, I thought the Greens were going to be one of the other big themes, that they were going to be the success story of tonight, but no. Uh, well, it's too strong. I know, but it's strong. Ex- against expectations, um, it hasn't right. really so been. The Greens have shown that they can appeal to the mainstream. Yes, and that yes. They can, they can position themselves as a party that's not extremely radical, that they have an economic vision, that they're able mm. to offer some of those things that they've often been accused of not being yeah. able to offer. So I think they've done well in positioning themselves, mm. and if they can sustain that, um, throughout the next term, then I think mm. they'll be able to come into 2014 with a good chance. But it, somewhat oddly, the Greens are almost better placed for the next election cycle than mm-hmm. Labour are. Even though oh, they've yes, got about absolutely. The vote. They've got the new generation of people coming yeah. through. Um, they're feeling quite yep. stable. Yep. I mean, the, the Greens um, have got a trajectory to build on. Labour's got to yeah. do some bloodletting. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. And then yeah. going forward. And that's no. not an ideal place for them to I be. I think the Greens will be quite happy. Yeah. going yeah. into the next parliamentary term. Yeah. I think yeah. potentially the worst thing for Labour is that they lose all their young blood and they, they lose most of their yeah. new and fresh MPs. Mm. They don't get the likes of Jordan Carter and, mm. and um, Michael Wood perhaps yeah. on the yeah. cusp of yeah. getting in, mm. but they still have um, Ross Robertson and, and Rick Barker and some of the lower profile it's, Labour Party MPs. Yeah. It shows that their problems go further back than just yeah. tonight and that... Um, that bloodletting is because the hard decisions haven't been made right. in the last few years. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, as I say, we're coming up to the end of our, uh, our Otago University election night special uh, live webcast. Yes. Yeah. A um, few minutes to go. What are we going to see in the next term? Are we going to see National stick to its policies? Or is National see this as, well, we've got our mandate, We'll go for gold. Oh, that's the thing that Key has. Um, that's his most important part of the brand is his reliability, mm-hmm. you know, perceived honesty, trustworthiness. There's no way he's going to um, throw that away. He does want another term mm-hmm. after this one. Um, so, no, I think they'll govern quite conservatively. Mm-hmm. The only problem is that I do think the economic clouds sure. are looking a bit black sure. and that you know, um, any government coming in now is going to have to... Um, bring up some bad medicine I think Mm -hmm. Um, so they might be pushed into more radical reforms than they're suggesting. Do you think circumstances may overtake intention? That's right Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I think they intend to govern very conservatively Mm -hmm. but it may not happen that way Yeah I mean at the end of the day you've also got to realise that National have actually increased their share of the vote (laughs) Yeah. overall they've done better than they did last election with potentially a worse, uh, not a worse campaign but a well, yeah, yeah, a worse campaign. They have, they have yeah. a campaign yeah. as well. That's right. Well, they didn't have Labour to kick against this time, well, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So unheard of to have a government increase, well, almost unheard of, increasing the majority. No, it's not. It's what Labour did in 2002. Oh. Yeah, yeah okay. there's a difference on what policies they yeah. ran on, though. Yeah. They ran on, apparently, one of the most unpopular policies yeah. was the main plague right. of the whole election. Yeah. Yeah. They ran on a zero budget. And let's be frank, I mean, you know, unemployment's mm. higher than it was yeah. when they yeah. took over, they've got more people leaving. I mean, you know, now they've got reasons for that, yeah. quite, but, you know, the, I think the country has decided they want stability, yeah. they want more of the same, they don't want to rock the boat. And, and that's almost, what they're get. This is almost the ideal result for National, I guess. Um, Winston Peters wouldn't be as helpful for them as what they would have wanted, mm. but I think that having slightly short of a majority will mean that our voters won't be scared away next time. Mm. Um, I think it means that they can then position themselves like they did last time, act to the right, unite a future, mm. with mm. them kind of in the middle, Māori mm. Party to the left, they can mm. look as though they're moderate. Mm. They will be moderate, they won't do anything extreme, yeah. and I think it'll just be three more years of the same. Yeah, sure. yeah. more of the same. Great. On okay. that note, uh, we've reached 11 o'clock, which brings to an end our, uh, our time, so it just remains for us to make some thanks. Uh, thanks first of all to all the guests and commentators who've come mm. either through the studio or have come over the telephone. 
Uh, to oh. James and Ashley in particular, who've not only been commentators, but have been beavering away in the background, uh, just constantly, just yeah. uh, Thanks, guys. Doing, very, yeah. doing all the stuff that's needed. Yeah, okay. Um, but particularly to the producers, uh, Joe and, and Megan, um, who have been trying to make it all happen. Um, so thanks guys. Um, everyone out in the, the back room that's been doing all the um, all the work actually, the technical work. And I'm so, gonna, we're going to name them. Oh it's yes, we Matthew, should. Matthew, yeah. Anne-Marie, Emerson, Jeff, Russell, Pete, Bernard and John. Thank you to all of you uh, individually. And of course, thanks for everyone that's watched. Yeah. So thanks for um, logging on and watching this on the Herald site, on the ODT site, and maybe even on the Otago University website. And good night to you all. Enjoy the rest of your night. See you in three years' time.